Hello, my name is Lisa Spanos. My colleagues and I, Lainey Nix and Dana Bozell, have put together this slideshow presentation for you on encephalitis. Hope you enjoy. Encephalitis is inflammation of the brain. It is most often due to an infection by a virus. It could be a primary condition or a secondary condition. If a primary condition, it is usually caused by a viral infection and it directly affects the brain. If it's a secondary condition, it is caused by a faulty immune reaction in response to a, an infection elsewhere in our body. The exact cause of encephalitis is often unknown. Most people have no symptoms at all or just mild flu-like symptoms such as fever, headache, aches and pains in their muscles and joints. Severe cases though of encephalitis can be life-threatening. It is important to seek prompt medical attention. Some other signs to be aware of are confusion, agitation, or even hallucinations. So it can be pretty bad. Some causes and symptoms. There are more than a dozen viruses that can cause encephalitis. It is spread by human to human contact or by animal bites. The exact cause is unknown. There are many viruses that can cause encephalitis. Some of the viruses are chickenpox, measles, mumps, and the HIV virus. Also, a mosquito-borne virus called arbovirus. They are spread, like I said, by either you know human-to-human -human contact or animal bites. In the United States alone, there are several thousand cases reported each year. We found a, this little video to show you just how dangerous and devastating this disease really is. It was responsible for 77,000 deaths in 2013 alone. It's encephalitis, and here's what you need to know to survive. Here's another short little video. This video shows the dangers and complications that encephalitis can cause. Encephalitis is an acute inflammation of the brain that causes damage by pushing the inflamed parts of your brain up against the skull. It's most often caused by viruses, but can also be caused by bacteria as well as other diseases such as syphilis or rabies. Its symptoms appear abruptly and requires immediate treatment, otherwise it can be severely life-threatening. Encephalitis incidents occur everywhere throughout the world across all ages. In Western countries, about 7.4 cases per 100,000 people are reported every year, while about 6.34 per 100,000 are reported every year in tropical countries. The exact causes of encephalitis are often unknown, although the most common diagnosed causes are from viral infections such as rabies, herpes, syphilis, measles, and mumps. As the brain gets larger from inflammation, victims suffer from fever, headaches, drowsiness or confusion, a stiff neck, and seizures. Death occurs due to encephalitis-related complications, including the development of meningitis, severe brain swelling, intractable seizures, and low blood platelet counts. Getting bit by a mosquito that causes the virus is bad. The risk of contracting a mosquito-borne virus is greatest in mid to late summer when mosquitoes are the most active. Also in those rural areas where the viruses are known to exist, West Nile encephalitis is an emerging health hazard in the United States. This disease was first introduced in 1999 and in that year alone 284 Americans have died that they know of from that disease in that year of 1999, which is a very high rate. In the United States, encephalitis is caused by the herpes simplex virus 1 and 2. It is a global concern because it's contagious. Uh, it can be passed on from person to person by either sneezing or coughing and that can release droplets of the virus into the air. Diagnosis of this disease requires careful questioning and a complete medical history. Mainly questions about symptoms and risks. There are many diagnostic tests that also needed to rule out other disorders. Um, some radiographic testing can be done. Um, it is usually, brain imaging is usually the first test 
that they do if the patient shows a history and symptoms of you know encephalitis or, or brain swelling um, and this type of the test is the best one to determine if there's brain swelling um, a CAT scan which is produces cross-sectional images an MRI which is 3d images and an EEG which records the act like the activity of the brain waves as it's going on to see if there's maybe a tumor or something in there see the white spots show that encephalitis or swelling of the brain is present some other lab tests can be done you know samples of urine and blood um, most of the time though they do a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture and um, they go into the lower back and draw out a little bit of fluid of your spinal fluid and see if any viruses are in there then they can also do like a little uh, swab of the back of your throat um, to see if any uh, viruses are present there also Treatment for mild encephalitis is complete bed rest, drink plenty of fluids, and take some anti-inflammatory drugs like Motrin or Advil. Um, if encephalitis is due to a certain virus, treatment may require IV intravenous drugs, antiviral drugs, um, like uh, Zovirax and Fosicarva. Fos I know that's, I pronounced it wrong. But, you know, you'd have to get IV drugs if it's, you know, due to certain viruses. Additional supportive care is needed for people in the hospital with severe encephalitis. You know, they may need breathing assistance, um, IV fluids to ensure proper hydration and essential minerals, um, anti-inflammatory drugs like corticosteroids to help prevent swelling and pressure in the skull some seizure medications to prevent any seizures or any of that seizure type activity to happen. Um, Follow-up care, like after the initial illness, it may, it may be necessary to, to receive additional therapy, physical therapy to improve strength, balance, and coordination. Occupational therapy um, develops everyday skills or helps you get on with uh, activities of daily living. You know, brushing your teeth, your hair, uh, getting dressed, uh, a speech therapy to relearn muscle control and to pronounce the words you're speaking, and psychotherapy, you know, to better learn how to cope, uh, improve your mood, just, you know, well being of your body. The best way to prevent the disease is to take precautionary measures. Good hand hygiene is so important. Don't share any utensils, eating utensils, and get vaccinated. I think vaccinations are very important for our immunity. And to protect yourself against mosquitoes and ticks, dress with long sleeves and long pants if you go outside during dusk to dawn hours, um, especially if you're going in wooded areas with tall grasses and shrubs. Uh, put a, apply plenty of mosquito repellent. Uh, get rid of standing water outside your home. Mosquitoes like to lay their eggs in there. I would just like to say thank you again for watching our little video and I hope you found it to be very informative. And if you'd like to know more about encephalitis, you can visit these websites, um, Center for Disease Control, the Mayo Clinic, or another great one for information is encephalitisglobal.org. They can help answer any or all or more of your questions that you have. Thank you again for watching our video. I hope you found it very enjoyable and very informative. Thanks again.